Hello and welcome to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Laura DeAngelis coming to you from the Baptist Health South Florida studios in Coral Gables. Well, concussions continue to be a hot topic in sports medicine, especially with new research emerging that shows the risks of contact sports like football and the dangers that these sports can present for brain injuries. And with me today to talk all about concussions is Dr. Michael Swartzen, a primary care orthopedics and sports medicine physician at the Miami Orthopedics and sports medicine issue. Dr. Swarson, welcome. We're so glad to have you with us today. Thank you for having me back. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Well, we're, we want to start our discussion today with a video, actually, from the National Institutes of Health, and it talks about traumatic brain injury. So we'll take a look, and then we'll chat about it after. Traumatic brain injury, or TBI, is an injury that disrupts the brain and its activity. TBI can result from a blow to the head, a jolt of the brain, or an object that goes through the skull. In the United States each year, 1.7 million people sustain a traumatic brain injury. Each of these heads represents 20,000 people. Of the 1.7 million injured, 50,000 people die and more than 250,000 are hospitalized. TBI can be mild to severe. Severe TBI can lead to permanent disability and even death. 75% of brain injuries are mild, meaning they are not life-threatening. In the U.S., most brain injuries in children, 55%, are caused by falls. 24% are caused by being hit in the head with an object, like a soccer ball. Among children older than five, car accidents are the number one cause of TBI-related death. Assault is the number one cause of TBI-related death in those younger than five. But even mild brain injury, like a concussion, can seriously affect daily activities. Mild TBI can cause problems with the child's speaking or understanding, movement, thinking or memory, and personality or mood. We can all help reduce the risk of TBI in children. Use a safety seat and or a seat belt when the child is in a motor vehicle. Make sure the child wears a helmet when riding a bicycle, skateboarding, and playing sports like hockey and football. Install window guards and stair safety gates at home. Avoid shaking or jolting a baby. Okay, so doctor, there's a lot of information obviously in that video about traumatic brain injuries. Like 1.7 million people getting them a year is a lot. And I guess my first question though is when we talk about traumatic brain injury, is it the same thing as a concussion? Is a concussion the same or a type of a traumatic brain injury? So how does that fall into traumatic brain injuries? So my field of expertise is particularly sports related concussions. Right. Uh, a lot of that video talked about traumatic brain injury and when we talk about concussions on the spectrum, that's the mild traumatic brain injury. I don't want people to think that mild means they can ignore it or, or it's, right. it's not serious. Mild simply means it's non-life-threatening. So it's still something to be taken seriously. So we still like keeping the term traumatic brain injury around when we talk about sports-related concussions so that people really get it. Your, your brain has been injured. Right you need time to recover, you need evaluation and follow-up. This isn't something to ignore, right. this isn't something to move past. Um, I, I think the attention that we've been getting with concussions recently has been very helpful. Okay, and again, just to also give the definition, I know you're focusing on, on sports-related concussions, but mm -hmm. when we hear concussion, what is the definition? What does that mean? So my definition of a concussion uh, is any change in the neurological status of a person, okay. so their, their memory, their balance, things like that, after any kind of trauma. Now they mentioned in that video a car accidents. Right. Sure, that, that can be a big trauma. Um, they also mentioned if you get hit in the head with a soccer ball. Yes. It doesn't necessarily have to be a hit to the head. It's any blow anywhere that results in force to the head. Okay. Right, so the brain sits in the skull, and you could kind of see it in the picture, sure. right? And there's a space between the bone of the skull and the soft tissue of the brain. In that soft tissue, there's a liquid, the, your, your cerebral spinal fluid, okay. and so it acts as a buffer. 
you can kind of think of it as a yolk in an egg. Okay. Okay. Sure. And so even if if you pushed me and I'm holding the egg in my hand, the force is still going to go to my hand, and if I shake that egg, it could cause a problem. Okay. Right. Even if the egg doesn't crack. Right. That's a great analogy, actually. A good way, I think, to put it all into perspective. Now, uh, in that video, a lot of it was focused on kids. Uh, but one thing we should point out is that concussions don't just affect children. I mean, this is something anyone can get at any time? Correct. We worry most about children because uh, it's the hardest to, to um, actually figure out because sometimes they can't speak to us that well. Right, so right. we need to be very sensitive to, to the barrier between the, the medical knowledge that they might have. Okay. Uh, adults are, are just as susceptible to concussions as children. Um, adults in, are, are bigger, um, they stand taller, they engage in behaviors, they, they drive more, uh, there's more at risk for, for car crashes and things like that that can still cause concussions. We worry more about kids because they play sports and we want to keep them safe. Right. Um, but adults are just as risk. Okay, and one other thing about children, interesting you mentioned it's true, they can't always verbalize symptoms, like, like an adult can say what's happening. But also with children, is there a concern because since they're still growing in general that there's still brain development going on? I mean, is that also part of the concern about the severity and what might happen to them? It's more about how uh, long it might take for them to recover. Okay. Right, kids are, are usually put under a lot of stress at home, right. with, uh, with their parents at school, with their friends and with their, their homework. Um, and then, you know, whether it's uh, sports or not, it, it doesn't matter. Um, they're put under pressure from the moment they get up to, to the minute they go to bed, yeah. especially with, with the internet and phones and, and television. So um, evaluating them properly and teaching or educating them and the parents as to what are the signs of a concussion, how to it properly uh, manage it, and then how to follow up are, are very important. Okay, absolutely. We're going to get to those signs and symptoms in a second, but also, Doctor, again, you mentioned obviously your specialty is in sports medicine. Mm -hmm. So just kind of wondering too, what kind of sports, if any, present a bigger risk for players to get concussions? Any, any sport where you will have uh, an object hitting you in the head would be number one. Okay. So whether it's a contact sport like uh, football or ice hockey where yeah. your, your head can collide with another person uh, or where your head can collide with the floor. So if it's a sport where you may fall down or they, they mentioned soccer in that video. So yes. it, you know, head butting is very common in soccer. Uh, people pulling, uh, jumping, and so someone else's elbow, while they're elevated, can, you know, accidentally sure. uh, uh, strike you in the head and cause um, and cause an injury. Okay. All right. Good to know. And also, again, following up on on your work in sports medicine, I know you're obviously interested uh, and and talk a lot about concussions. And I know you also do some work with the Miami Dolphins, which is my favorite team. So, kind of tell us about your work there, uh, and, and specifically in regards to concussions. So uh, on game day, I'm the, the main uh, physician that evaluates the players when there's uh, um, a cause to evaluate them, whether, okay. uh, and, and we're very, very sensitive to um, any cause for a concussion. So in, in the NFL, there's, uh, I know there's a lot of bad media attention, but there, there really is a concerted effort to not miss a single case. There are two people um, up in, in a booth watching the game from up above, and they're watching the TV monitors. Um, I'm watching on the field. Mm -hmm. I have a neurological specialist next to me who's an extra set of eyes and an extra pair of hands in case Great. something happens. Um, there's all the athletic trainers and the rest of the medical staff, not only on our team, but on the other team. The officials are also trained to watch out for signs and symptoms of concussion. And we have uh, a very blunt discussion with the players that if they see another player having any issues, they're to come to us. Same with the coaches. So really everyone on the field is uh, a part doctor trying to prevent anyone with a concussion from you know, us missing it. 
Okay. Well, again, a lot of work being done. We're going to talk a little bit mm -hmm. more, too, about what's going on in the NFL and what you do there a little later. But we also, of course, want to let our viewers know right away, as soon as possible, about the signs and symptoms that we should sure. be looking for. Uh, we actually have a graphic that kind okay. of offers a list of, of those signs. So, you know, doctor, if you could kind of walk us through and maybe highlight again uh, these signs and what people should be looking for as, as far as concussions go. Right. So you can imagine the brain controls uh, a lot of what we do and this list really really ties into what the brain controls uh, so obviously any trauma to the head can result in a headache okay people get headaches for many reasons uh, when people get a headache after a trauma we're very concerned that it might be related to a concussion okay um, having trouble to think normally um, memory problems uh, are, are all kind of tied in. Then having uh, dizziness, vision problems, balance problems are, are additionally more of, of um, either your, your memory or, or the balance. Um, you'll see in, in kind of classic cases, you'll see people stumble afterwards. Mm. You know, they, get, they look like they're getting up normally and then after one or two seconds they start to stumble maybe they miss a step that's that's a very good sign um, that if you see that that person should be evaluated for a concussion okay and you know doctor again some of those I mean they're all severe and we're talking about possible mm -hmm. possibly having a concussion but things like you said having trouble walking yep. uh, you know having vision problems vomiting these seem pretty severe so my one question is other sports injuries you hear about like ACL tears you hear mm -hmm. grade one or a grade two are there levels to concussions or is it just kind of you have a concussion and this is this is serious and we just have to get this taken care of so uh, more than 10 years ago, we did try and grade, grade concussions. Um, at the time, the most sensitive marker for a concussion that we used was a loss of consciousness, so people blacked out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That was our threshold. Uh, we've since learned from you know, our mistakes, honestly, okay. um, that perhaps uh, we, were, we were a little too harsh in what we thought was a concussion, and perhaps people that had just headaches or balance issues or fatigue or, or behavioral problems, perhaps that was related back to concussion. And so now we look for all of those symptoms each time there's an issue. Okay, good to know. And one thing too, doctor, before we get a break, you know, sometimes people may get a headache now and again. Mm -hmm. uh, when though should we worry, okay, is this just a headache or could this be something more severe, like a concussion? I mean, are we really have to think about, did we have a blow to the head or did we have some kind of a traumatic incident? What's kind of the, the test there for ourselves? You, you really have to know the history. So one of the most important things when evaluating concussion is, is what was the mechanism of injury. Okay. And so if there was no trauma, and again, my, my definition of trauma is broad. It doesn't have to be a hit to the head. Okay. But if you just were walking throughout the day and all of a sudden you noticed a headache, I, I wouldn't consider concussion as, as highly likely. Okay. It really, you need to have the story of the trauma. Even if it is a little bit more remote, Sure. Let's say it happened a couple hours ago. I, I would I would still get evaluated. But if it happened, you know, a week ago or it never happened, then I, I think concussion is quite low on the list of possibilities. Could be another just stressful day that yes. all of us are used to having. Yes. Okay, well, Dr. Swartz, we're off to a great start here. We have a lot more to get to, but we're going to take a quick break okay. first. And then when we come back, we are going to talk about how concussions are diagnosed and what the recovery process looks like. So stay tuned for that. You are watching the Health Channel, All Health All the Time on South Florida PBS. Please be sure to visit our website, allhealthallthetime.com, to submit your questions for the experts or to find out more about the Health Channel on South Florida PBS. We'll be right back.
Many websites selling medication may look professional and legitimate, but the vast majority of sites selling prescription drugs are doing so illegally. Criminals use websites to sell counterfeit medications that may contain life-threatening toxins. Dot Pharmacy is a website verification program that helps you identify safe and trustworthy online pharmacies. Purchasing medicine online can be safe and easy. Just look for pharmacy to the right of the dot in website addresses. You're gonna love your new birthday present. Are you ready? Ta-da! Today, grown-ups will try anything to get kids more active outdoors. Good thing, since active kids have a better chance of building stronger bones and maintaining a healthy body weight. Here's an idea. Let's go. Get out there with them. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America, who remind you, for strong bones, activity runs in the family. It's a teeter-totter. Welcome back to the Health Channel, all health all the time. I'm Laura DeAngelis. Joining me today is Dr. Michael Swartzen, a primary care orthopedics and sports medicine physician at the Miami Orthopedics and Sports Institute. And uh, we've been talking about concussions today. And again, Dr. Swartzen, we kind of started off the hour learning about some of the signs and the symptoms. And I do want to follow up on just one of those as well. We hear sometimes about people blacking out um, mm -hmm. possibly after some kind of a, a trauma. So right. talk again about how that is kind of a common, I guess, sign that perhaps you're dealing with a concussion and you really need to get evaluated. I, I would say that anyone that loses consciousness or, or blacks out or has uh, a big gap in their memory and they're not sure, um, that's probably one of the most concerning signs that you should really be evaluated. Uh, I'm not saying that you, if you don't black out, you don't have a concussion. Right. What, what I'm saying is that if you blacked out, I, I don't see how you don't have a concussion. Okay. All right. That makes so sense. So it's that serious. Okay. That's good to know. And actually, again, you know, we had a graphic before, which mm. um, I think might not be a bad thing to look at again, because mm -hmm. again, there are so many signs uh, that people might not even think of, you know, again, we talked about the headache, the vomiting, right. nausea, all the way down to even changes in sleep patterns. Yes. So, Doctor, when we look at these signs, let's even talk about how kind of number one crucial moment is knowing you might have a problem in the first place, right? I mean, that's what's going to get you to a doctor or right. just get you evaluated. The, the top two things on this list are probably the most concerning. Okay. So, uh, headache is common symptom with a concussion. A person who has a worsening headache or a severe headache or the second thing, vomiting, a lot of vomiting, that may not be what we call a sports-related concussion okay. or mild traumatic brain injury. You may have a severe traumatic brain injury and you need to get to hospital now. Okay. It's, it's that uh, serious. Yeah, it's that serious. Okay, and then once, let's say that is the case, whether you, whether you have to go to the hospital or if you are seeing a doctor, how exactly will you diagnose that it's a concussion that you're dealing with? What kind of testing or what's the uh, diagnostic procedure there? So in classic medicine, um, we use our, our heads, our hearts, and our hands. Yep. Uh, and with concussions, it's a clinical diagnosis, meaning it's a conversation. Okay. I talk to the patient. If available, I talk to, if it's a kid, I, 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 the parent, yeah. um, the coach, uh, an athletic trainer that worked with the team. Some, if they're coming to my office, this has happened some point in the past. And so whatever information I can get from that point, um, and then I have a conversation with my patient and we talk. Right. Um, the more familiar I am with the patient, the better I know what they're normally like and can be very sensitive to any changes. Um, for the most part, stories of concussions follow a, a very sim simple pattern, right? There was a, a traumatic injury. Right. They had some signs like what we put up in that graphic. Sure. And then those symptoms persisted for a period of time. Um, by the time they come see me, normally they should be a little bit better. Okay. And so we go over how to manage it from here. Um, it, it's quite rare that people get significantly worse a few days or, or weeks later. Sometimes the symptoms persist, but it's more about educating the patient, educating the family, trying to come up with a plan for their work, their school, 
their sport. Yeah. Um, really, with kids, we, we you know we used to talk about return to sports or return to play, mm -hmm. and and now we talk about return to school first. Right. And so, really, we have to make sure the the student is a student, and then once that's able to happen, then we can concentrate more on sports. Yeah. And so that's a conversation we have. Makes good sense. And mm -hmm. you, you know, Doctor, you just kind of mentioned it sounds like there is a kind of a collaborative effort going on. Maybe someone who is seeing you already had something happen. You know, it might be a day or two later. So I imagine maybe the first person to evaluate that athlete might be the, the trainer or the coach who is on the field, right? So again, there, there is, to me, it seems like a collaborative team effort, if you will, to, to try to really educate people about this. So the, uh, the Miami Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute, the, the group that I work for, um, we have a, a large community outreach program. So there is a physician or, or trained medical personnel at each high school football game. Okay. So in addition to each team having an athletic trainer who's a very qualified person to evaluate for concussions, there's also a physician on the sideline. Okay. Um, that physician is trained in screening and evaluating for concussion. So at least in Miami-Dade Public Schools, um, we have uh, very good medical care. Uh, other sports and other teams and for private teams and private schools, you know, I, I, each school has its own sure. routine. Um, sometimes it can be the coach. And so we do uh, go out as part of our community outreach and educate coaches on what, what is a concussion? Right. Why is it important? You know, because coaches want to win. They okay, want to sure, win. And course. then they want the kids to have fun as well. But yeah. they, they want to win. Um, but the, the bottom line is if you have an athlete that's concussed, they're not going to help you win. They're putting themselves in danger. They may be putting other athletes in danger. And so it's best to, to find them as quickly as possible and remove them from the field and allow them to rest all right, and that's, that kind of brings us to the next important question is now that we've evaluated, diagnosed it, we do want to get everyone kind of back to life, back to school, back to sports. So what does the recovery uh, process look like and kind of what's the protocol for, for treating someone who has a concussion? It starts with the um, evaluation. Um, if there's a, a baseline that's helpful, and we can go over that later, um, either on the sideline or in the office, we generally use... Um, a tool called a SCAT or a SCAT. Right now, it's the SCAT five. Okay. Um, it's a it's a sideline concussion assessment tool. It's just a, a way for us to try and I mentioned it's a clinical diagnosis, right. but it's a way for us to keep some objective evidence so that visit to visit we can see um, how many symptoms do you have, how severe are they, and these are subjective. The patient tells us, and then we do. Uh, memory evaluation, uh, um, we do balance testing. Okay. And so it's not perfect. Right. It's what we have. Okay. Um, like I said, it's mainly a clinical diagnosis, so you need uh, a physician trained in working with concussions um, for the subtleties. But it, it is a standardized tool we use. Once we use that, that part is used not only for the initial evaluation, but the follow up and the management. So we start with education, okay, how old is the patient? So if it's a child, we talk about where are they in school. Um, they may need to miss a couple days. Right. Okay, anything that you do that's worsening the symptom that you're having, increasing the severity, is not good. So if it's watching TV, if mm -hmm. it's playing with your phone, right. if it's um, reading a textbook, if it's uh, looking at a computer screen, all these things are known to worsen symptoms of a concussion, and you want to give yourself that rest. So it's mental rest, yes. it's physical rest, it's also emotional rest. So if there's a lot of stress in the family, mm. if uh, the parents aren't getting along, or it's just a, you know, a child's going through puberty and, and there, there are issues Struggling in the house. Struggling with that. Right, yeah. so uh, boyfriend, girlfriend problems, problems sure. at school. Um, the concussion can make that worse. Oh. And so everyone just needs to be sensitive to it. And so if we need to write a note for school or educate the parents or the coach, that's what we do. It's a lot about communication. Okay. And so that management is just protect my patient from themselves or others and let them rest. 
Okay, that makes good sense. And as as they you know as the symptoms go down, we allow them to progress in a gradual kind of uh, supervised fashion. Okay, that makes good sense. And we actually have a patient story uh, from the CDC mm -hmm. that actually talks about how long it can take to recover and how damaging a concussion can actually be. So let's take a look at that. Tracy suffered a, a concussion in a basketball game in January of 2005. When Tracy's injury happened, it didn't just happen to her, it happened to the whole family. What a lot of people don't realize about concussions is just how serious it can change your life. It's been over three and a half years already, and she is still struggling with dizziness and having problems reading. She's been hospitalized so many times, I couldn't even tell you how many, what we're at, what, what number we're at as far as emergency visits and hospital visits. The good news is, three and a half years later, there, there is progress, so there is hope. Uh, but one of the most important things is, is to educate people so that no one else would need to go through this again. The most important thing that I would ask any parent to consider if they do have a child that has a concussion or they think may have a concussion, please take a step back and make sure you're doing the right thing for the athlete and for your child. Get them to a doctor right away. Get them help. No scoreboard is that important. No win or loss is that important. We really need to make the right decisions for them. Well, doctor, I think that was a pretty powerful message from a parent, right? Yes. Again, reiterating what you're saying, education really is key here. Education, um, acknowledgement that there may be a problem and then, you know, not, not keeping your head in the sand. Yes. Um, and getting evaluated so that what might recover quickly recovers instead of uh, leaving someone with either in their sport or at work or at school and now something that could have maybe recovered in 10, 12 days, three and a half years later, um, she's, she's struggling with yeah. quite severe symptoms. Yeah, it's a sad story. Okay, well, we, we're going to take another quick break, Dr. Okay. Swarson, but when we come back, we're going to hear more, and he's going to tell us about concussion prevention. We're also going to learn about a specific condition that can be caused by maybe too many blows to the head. You are watching the Health Channel All Health All the Time here on South Florida PBS. Please be sure to visit the website, allhealthallthetime.com. Submit your questions for the experts and find out more about the Health Channel on South Florida PBS. We'll be right back. Cancer. We don't want to think about it, but I had to. Because you see, I was, I was traveling, I was enjoying life, I was working. It was too long since my last pap. When I was finally tested, we thought I might have cervical cancer. After worrying, no cancer. I was lucky. Women, please get a pap test to check for cervical cancer and get the inside knowledge about gynecologic cancers for you and the people who care about you. Worried about keeping your brain sharp as you age? Studies show that these four steps may help. Stay physically active. Strive for two and a half hours of moderate exercise weekly. Reduce vascular risk factors like high blood pressure and cholesterol with good diet, adequate sleep, and medication when necessary. Talk to your doctor about diseases and drugs that may impair brain function, and keep your brain lively with social and intellectual pursuits. For more information, visit Dana.org.
C stands for cutting edge research, clinical trials, and collaboration. Creating breakthrough treatments as Florida's only member of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Alliance. At Miami Cancer Institute, C also stands for cure. World-class cancer care right here at home. Learn more at MiamiCancerInstitute.com. Welcome back to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Laura DeAngelis, and with me today is Dr. Michael Swartzen, a primary care orthopedics and sports medicine physician at the Miami Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Doctor, again, we've been learning a lot about concussions this mm -hmm. hour, and just want to uh, clarify something for our viewers uh, that we talked about a little while ago. You were talking about the clinical evaluation that goes with figuring out if someone has a concussion. Right. Um, just again to remind folks what that means, and if, if they're concerned about it, does that mean I have to have a, a scan or a test, what that means. So it, in the past, a lot of um, concussions uh, end up in the emergency department. And one of the standard things that was done in the past is the patients get a CT scan of their head. Yes. What, what the emergency department is looking for, what that physician is, is trying to screen for, is a, a bleed in the brain, uh, which is a very severe issue. It's very life-threatening. Sure. Uh, no one wants to miss it. Um, it can come with the same signs as a concussion, and uh, that would be a severe traumatic brain injury. Okay. Concussions are not, and so CT scans are not useful for concussions at all. In fact, the person just gets irradiated for no reason. Um, a, a good clinical exam where the physician has a conversation and does a, a neurological evaluation is sufficient to rule out uh, a brain bleed that would necessitate a CT scan. That's why I mentioned before, if you have a severe headache, right. if you have a lot of nausea or vomiting or, or things aren't working well, yeah, you gotta get evaluated to make sure that's not happening. But in a sports-related concussion, you don't need to run to the emergency department to get a CT scan. Uh, there was also, um, a couple months ago, a blood test came out and it kind of got labeled as a blood test for concussions. Okay. No, the blood test is to check for a severe traumatic brain injury, okay. like what we mentioned. Um, and the blood test is, can only be done at hospitals and okay. it takes four or five hours to get the results. So right now the blood test isn't as useful. Um, hopefully one day we may have something that we can just prick a finger yeah, and, and out comes uh, you know, a thing saying that yes, you have a concussion, no you don't, right. but right now it still relies on the athlete or, or pers patient being honest with the person evaluating them and with the person evaluating them being uh, trained in evaluating concussions. Okay. Good to know. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's get into again some of these preventive measures that yes. you know people were hoping they're taking to prevent this from happening in the first place, because that's how we're going to bring that incident rate down. And I guess first up, you know, people think about helmets when mm -hmm. we talk about sports, right? Now, not all athletes, of course, not every sport requires them or wears them, but we see them in football, and we see them in hockey, baseball, and even for cyclists. So, uh, you know, doctor, again, just tell us about how helmets do help. Uh, protect and can you still get a concussion though even if you're wearing a helmet? So yes, you can still get a concussion okay. while, wear, while wearing a helmet. Concussions um, are really about the motion that the, the, the brain endures, right. the acceleration, deceleration, the rotational forces. Um, helmets are great at protecting your skull from uh, a break. Okay. So skull fractures uh, used to happen in football. They can happen when you fall from a motorcycle or playing any other sport where yeah. you wear a helmet. Um, so that's what they're designed to do and they work really well for that purpose. Now they are working on getting helmets that result in lower incidence of concussions. We're investigating why. There's um, there's newer helmets with uh, accelerometers or sensors that measure the force you're taking, the angle. Wow. We're taking that data to try and make, um, make every game safer, including football. Right. So right now the, the NFL does testing on all, um, all helmets and actually tells athletes, these are the helmets that seem to be performing better than others. Athletes have a choice, right. but 
really, it's the same with shoes. There's also shoes. They say these shoes perform better and athletes have less injuries. So the equipment athletes wear is critical to protecting them. People don't always think about it. A lot of times equipment is, is it's a fashion statement. Right. And, and that can be detrimental to your health. Or it's, um, or it's a financial incentive. You are um, you know, sponsored or you have a, a, a partnership deal with oh, a yeah. shoe manufacturer. Okay. And yeah. so they pay you even though maybe their, their product isn't um, the best quality compared sure. to another one. So it really can sometimes put athletes in, um, in a little bit of a bind. I would think so. Yeah. Or if it's a high school and, and they don't have the budget for the newest, best helmets, sure. you know, that can also kind of be seemingly uh, not great for, for kids' health. Okay. So one, one sport too, just I'm curious about this myself. Uh, we hear about soccer and people mm -hmm. getting concussions. I, I have friends who their kids have had soccer related concussions. Sometimes now though you see these soccer players wearing these special bands yeah. on their head and uh, they're supposedly for helping prevent concussions. I'm just kind of wondering what your take is on these and uh, fashion statement or effective <laughs> or what are your thoughts? I hope in the future we find more ways to help prevent concussions with equipment. Yeah. Um, right now, there's no data to suggest that mouth guards or mm. wearing a helmet or wearing a headband will protect you from a concussion. Okay. Or even lessen the severity of a concussion if you have one. We don't have it yet. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of companies who are taking advantage of the fear that parents and, and athletes have by promoting a yeah. uh, product that hasn't really been shown to do that, but parents are, are worried. Yeah. They're worried, and so they're like, well, for, for you know, this amount of money, I, I can maybe protect my kid, and sure. I'm doing my job as a parent. Okay, all right, so more data needs to be seen on that. Yes. Now, all right, Doctor, we know professional athletes who play in the NFL and the NHL are required to be examined if they have a serious hit to the head or they show signs of a concussion. And we touched on this a little bit in the beginning of the show, but again, talk about the importance of why, you know, referees, officials, everyone, if yes. you will, on the field needs to be educated. And it sounds like there's a lot of that happening, at least with the work that you're doing. So again, the importance um, of this team effort on the field by everybody. It's a huge team effort. Um, before every NFL game, 60 minutes before, uh, the medical staffs for both teams, uh, the spotters or the athletic trainers up, uh, up top looking, uh, and the game day officials with the unaffiliated neurological consultants, we all meet. Hmm. We all meet for a short meeting so that we all recognize each other's faces and we can find each other on the sideline. We're also connected by headphones. Sure. So we communicate. That's the key. We know it, it's real life. We're not, we're human beings, it's not gonna be perfect. Right. So it's with teamwork, communication, vigilance that we, we screen as much as possible. So the threshold for calling for someone to be evaluated is extremely low. So someone with no medical training, like a uh, um, official or a coach, can say, I think this person has a concussion or might have a concussion can we evaluate him? The answer is always yes, we will evaluate him now. Okay, all right, again, good team effort going on. All right, one, one thing, Doctor, we do want to touch on, because I think uh, there's been some information, perhaps misinformation out there uh, about a study that dealt with um, something called CTE. Well, that's the short name for it. Mm -hmm. I may butcher the real name. I know it's chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Yeah, you got it. Okay, that was pretty good. Um, uh, but again, I know the study uh, found that 99% of brains donated by 111 former NFL players, 99% of them had this. So again, I just want to get your take on the study and mm -hmm. kind of where we go from here with that information out there right now. Right. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, doctor. And first of all, what is CT? Right. So, for our so viewers out there? Uh, I think the traumatic part people will, will understand. Sure. Uh, chronic in medical terms means that it's been going on more than three months. So something that's happened in the, in the past um, or been going on for a while. And then encephalopathy is just a term that describes disease of the brain. It's very vague. 
you can get encephalopathy from um, infections, you can get okay. encephalopathy from liver issues, so it, it's not specific to just the brain, um, it can be caused by other things with its effect on the brain. So a, a lot of our, our older research kind of looks at boxing, Yes. and I think we can all agree that repetitive trauma to the head or brain is not ideal. Sure. Um, there's a price to pay with that kind of trauma, just like uh, manual laborers doing their jobs for, for many, many years, or there's a lot of uh, uh, surgeons that have to stand in the operating room and they end up with, with back problems. Correct. Not trying yeah. to compare the severity, but right. every occupation has its, its hazards, um, and certainly uh, contact sports have a hazard of getting your, your getting trauma and that trauma to the brain can result in issues. So this study looked at a very um, small subsection of NFL players. And so what they did was they, they asked if any, any family or player noticed um, signs of, of like post-concussion uh, issues, so neurological problems, mm -hmm. whether it's memory loss, behavioral issues, uh, depression, any of those things why don't you send us those brains so we can take a look at them? Right. And what they found in the research is that almost all those brains had an extra protein called tau. And what this group is saying is that it's possible that repeated head trauma results in this accumulation of this tau protein. And that tau protein leads to the neurological changes that we see uh, prior to the person uh, passing away. Because the only way they can really see this currently is with a pathologist putting the brain on a slide mm. looking to see how much tau is there. Okay. So this is all after death that we find the yeah. diagnosis of CTE. So I would say the studying is, is quite alarming. Uh, we're all very concerned that the sport we love or the, the young athletes that we um, send out to play and, and have teamwork and exercise and camaraderie and, and competitive spirit may result in long-term damage. Right. We're all worried. And, and this study kind of proves that we should be worried. But because they didn't do a complete study, right? They didn't look sure. at every brain. This hasn't yeah. been done for um, several centers across the country with different people looking at, at the same data, we need to confirm it. We need to make sure you know, and find out why is it these gentlemen that had the issues? Is there something that can protect them? Right. And then over time, we talked about how do you prevent concussions? You make the game safer, right? right? You make rules that you know, um, putting bounties on trying to hurt another player is illegal. You teach kids from a younger age how to tackle appropriately. Don't use your head as a weapon. We teach kids now, if you have symptoms, come out, yeah. right? Everyone can theoretically recover from an injury, and that includes the brain. The, the story of the, um, the girl that we heard right, um, in the video, in the video uh, three and a half years, a long time, but you heard the mom saying it, it is getting better. So even in some of the worst cases, it, it should get better with time. And so as long as you diagnose the concussion appropriately and let the player rest, not go back too soon. Right, that's key. That's key then your, your chances of making a full recovery um, increase significantly. And we hope that with full recoveries, we don't end up with things like CTE. Right. All right. Well, Dr. Swartzen, again, there's a lot more to kind of learn, as you said, but there mm -hmm. is progress going on, and that's what we're going to talk about after the break. And that is, again, some of the progress that's being made to help reduce the number of incidents of the concussions in professional sports. So stay with us. We'll be back with more after this.
C stands for courage, collaboration, compassion, and cutting edge with the most advanced radiation treatments, including proton therapy. At Miami Cancer Institute, C also stands for Cure. World-class cancer care right here at home. Learn more at MiamiCancerInstitute.com. Every year, millions of Americans are exposed to a contagious virus. What is this virus? It's stigma. Stigma promotes an environment of shame, fear, and silence, which prevents millions of people from seeking help. But there's good news. The National Alliance on Mental Illness believes stigma towards mental illness is 100% curable. So do yourself and everyone a favor. Go to curestigma.org and get tested for stigma. Welcome back to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Laura DeAngelis. And joining me today is Dr. Michael Swartzen, a primary care orthopedics and sports medicine physician at the Miami Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Well, this hour, we have been talking about the dangers of concussions in sports and why it is so important to get evaluated and work with doctors as soon as you experience any symptoms. And Dr. Swartzen, you know, we talked a little bit earlier in the show um, about work that is being done in the NFL to try to make the game, I guess, safer or just better for the players. And you, I know, you do some work with the Dolphins yep. yourself, Miami Dolphins, my team. Um, so just curious again, tell us a little bit more about what is going on to try to make the game safer for the players out there. So I mentioned that the equipment from all levels, head to toe, is being looked at to see if there's any changes. Um, they constantly implement new rules Right, so not only is it about technique, but also, right. you know, you're not supposed to spear, you're not supposed to lead with your head, mm. uh, and and this may be contrary to what players want, but this is for their protection. You know, unfortunately, you know, as as society becomes more evolved and, and our intelligence and research increases, we find that some of the things that were done in the past aren't aren't good, and we need to improve. We need to make ourselves better, and I think the players are, are starting to understand that. So one was creating a culture where um, the medical was separated from everything else. We were allowed to independently make decisions that would not fall under the team, okay. which it didn't, but you, you could see how there's a, a small conflict of sure. interest. Um, and so in addition to me on the sideline, there's an unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant so like I said I have a uh, help that shadows me during the game and provides for a uh, backup another set of eyes maybe there's something I missed right. maybe there's something I didn't ask uh, but we have a checklist we have a protocol we now have the tent if you've seen those uh, big blue tents oh, on the is that what that is? That's yeah, you? I, uh, that's I go in <laughs> there, there with are. the athlete because okay. For me, I, I don't notice the crowd or the cameras, right. but they're there. Sure, uh, they're there. It's, it's not the easiest thing for a player to get evaluated, knowing that everyone in the stadium's looking at them, that the camera's right in their face. So mm. to remove that distraction and to allow for a, a calm, thorough evaluation, yeah. we put it in the tent. And so even though we're right there, and so it's efficient and quick, uh, we can evaluate them. So it's the player, myself, the unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant, and, and generally the, the head athletic trainer for the team. And we go through a protocol. And that protocol is based on the best research that we have, uh, which right now the, the Berlin consensus statement is the, the best evidence we have to use. Um, I think I, I mentioned to you earlier in, in the break, um, flying Monday, for meeting with the NFL with all the physicians yes, from all the teams big meeting. and the league and the NFL Players Association and um, everyone involved to make sure we have everyone on the same page. Right. Right. No one wants to do a bad job. Everyone wants to do a good job for the players and all our athletes in general. Right. That's sure. the goal is to provide the best quality of care possible knowing that it's it's hard yeah 
Definitely. Now, all of these efforts and uh, that you just described here, Doctor, is this part of what we we've heard is maybe the place smart place safe initiative? Is that kind of an umbrella for a lot of these uh, things that you talked about? Everyone likes a catch slogan. Sure. Right. It, it's it's catchy. It helps people catch on. So there's the the play 60, which I'm a firm believer in. Okay. You know, kids should get outside and play. Absolutely. Play smart. Play safe. It's a, it's a clear message that, you know, professional sports wants to send to um, kids and parents. We want you to have fun, but you got to be smart about it right. and you got to be safe. Like those two things are more important than winning and they're more important than, um, you know, catching that pass or, or being with your team. You need to be smart and you need to be safe. Once those are accomplished to the best we can, then you get to play. All right, that makes sense. And you know, that, that kind of brings up, you've touched on this before, and I think as we start to wind down the hour, very important, being uh, honest with your doctor, if you're seeing someone after the fact, uh, or with your trainer. I mean, let's just talk about the honesty factor and when, so you know when it is safe to get back in the game, to get back into sports. Uh, Let's talk about that. Honesty, key, right? Is, honesty is key. Um, one of the reasons why we do uh, a paper and pencil test is a lot of times athletes will, will speak to us and they may not even realize that they're, they're minimalizing their symptoms or, you know, kind of just overlooking some stuff. Like, I'm, everyone is so kind of trained, not just football players, but everyone, oh, I'm fine. How are things? I'm fine. Could be a huge disaster at home, but no one wants to, to talk about it. Um, but when we put a, a paper in front of them and ask them, you know, do you have a concussion? What is the severity from one to six? And we go through, you know, a couple dozen symptoms, they start answering honestly. Mm, okay. and, and so, if they lie, if they just look at the paper and circle all zeros and say, I'm fine, I, I don't have a test that can, that can work through that. Right. I can have my suspicions, and if I feel strongly enough, I'll still hold the athlete out despite their um, insistence that they're fine. And, and yeah. there was an incident uh, two, three years ago on the sideline where a player was jumping up and down, screaming to get back in. I said, you're, you're not going back in. You're, you're done for today, yeah. you know, let's, you know, players are, are it's their job or, or with other athletes, it's a hobby or with high school athletes, their main identity may be playing that sport Absolutely. and taking them out of the yeah. sport could be devastating to them. So to, to take them out is, uh, is the right thing to do. Okay, and real, real quick thought here, final word of advice for parents, coaches, people in general just watching, what do you say? Be smart? <laughs> be smart, play safe, which means be smart and play safe. It doesn't mean don't let your kid play any sport right. because we, we didn't go through this that much, but every sport has a risk for concussions, not just tackle football. So um, let your kids play things will be fine, let right. them enjoy. All right, kids will be kids, but be yes. smart about it. All right, well, Dr. Swartzen, thank you so much for joining us today. So much important information about concussions. Thank you for having me again. Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. I'm sure you'll be here again, too. Okay. And thank you all for joining us today. That's all the time we have for this hour. Please be sure to join us next time here on the Health Channel, All Health All the Time, and check out the website, allhealthallthetime.com. I'm Laura DeAngelis. I'll see you next time.